Shoyo Alvitre. I'm a comic book artist and illustrator. Um, I'm from the Tongva tribe of Southern California and also Scottish. Oh, that's a cool mixture. Uh, um, can you tell us a little bit about your art practice um, and then how you were introduced to self help graphics? Were you familiar with us beforehand? Yeah, I actually, um, I was familiar with self help graphics beforehand. Um, they had run a, I guess it was an art show, and I want to say 2016 maybe. Um, it was in support of the Standing Rock protests that were going on. And um, I believe they had a piece of my art shown in a gallery exhibition with a bunch of other artists. Um, and so I had a, a brief sort of relationship with them prior. Um, and then when they contacted me again, I knew who they were. You know, I've, I've seen the work that they've done. And um, yeah, I was excited to be able to work with them one-on-one -on -one again. Oh, and then can you tell us a little bit about your art practice? Are you, um, you said, a uh, graphic novelist? Um, yeah, um, so my art practice is primarily illustration and comic books, and um, most of the work that I do now revolves around sort of retelling indigenous histories and native-based histories um, through sequential art format, which is also comic books and graphic novels. Um, I also do social justice artwork um, and painting and writing and a couple of other things. But a little bit of everything. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> well, that, that's great. You get to branch out into different mediums. Yeah. Um, are, are you a, a writer then as well? The, okay. I, I consider myself one now because I've had some of my stuff published, so I guess I can throw that tag in there. But <laughs> I've always <laughs> loved with all the other tags. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now, can you can you tell us a little bit about, about your print? You know, um, How did you land on the image, or was... Um, was there something you know you really wanted to share with the world? What's the what was the thought process behind it? Yeah, well, initially I looked up sort of the history of self help graphics, and I, I learned you know briefly that it was actually found founded by a Franciscan friar, I guess, um, which I found really interesting. Um, some of the work that I've done prior is sort of the relationship between um, the Tongva tribe and Gabrielino people, um, who are you know the traditional caretakers of. Southern California, Los Angeles Basin area, um, but their relationship with the mission system and my also my personal relationship with that and my family history. So um, I found that kind of interesting and I started from that point onward. And I also kind of wanted to play off of the Los Angeles seal for a very long time. Um, it showcases a Gavrilino Tongva woman um, and she's sort of in like European, like a toga dress, a, a drape dress. And it has sort of, you know, your problematic imagery a little bit with the mission and some other things and in the past it had other icons and stuff that they took off um, but I thought you know what would our representation look like through our lens with our own objects and not these sort of imported objects that make up Los Angeles like if everything was taken away from LA and it was just left back to the original people what would that sort of representation visually look like um, so the image that I came up with is sort of a uh, a Tongva Gabrielino woman. Um, she's dressed in traditional regalia. Um, she has a traditional ceremonial sword um, that we've had showcased um, in some museums in Southern California, which have thus been removed because of cultural um, sensitivity issues and then also NAGPRA laws that have come into play over the years. Um, but I wanted to include that because it was something that um, our people used as well as surrounding Southern California Indian people um, and I thought it was a good representation. I also included sort of like shell um, bead patterns that we would use in our currency and then behind her is sort of a circular image and it's actually called the Universe Stone and it's at a, a museum here in Southern California and it's sort of what they believe to be a representation of sort of our world and our, our way of thinking in a, a circular fashion. Um, so that's sort of the primary like visual on the piece. I always find it interesting the the usage of circles in different you know communities and cultures and how just everything is cyclical, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, and so when it um, when it came to the the creation of the the artwork itself, I know um, you were working from home and working um, with Dewey here. Can you share a little bit about how? how that experience went and, you know, if, if that affected any um, image changes or color changes. Um, yeah, um, well, I would have loved to have been here, but <laughs> I couldn't just with my scheduling and then um, also because I watch my kids all week 
and my, my husband's work schedule. So we sort of arranged a thing where I would provide things and steps to him as clear as I could possibly make it. And then once he got into the actual physical making of the print, he could sort of share those steps with me back. Um, and that went from color mixing to doing screens. So it did impact the way that I put the image um, sort of in a final format. I had to sort of prearrange everything and make sure all my layers were you know, accurate to give over to him. The one issue was like sort of color. Um, when you, you transfer something from like what you have in your head to a digital color and then send that over to somebody, you never know if their computer is calibrated the same way or if they're reading the color the same way. And then physically mixing that into a paint too is a whole another art form in itself. Um, so I think that was one of the hurdles is just color mixing and Dewey was really great. He sent me all these pictures of things in, outside, inside, test swatches, and I had to see the colors next to one another because if I just see a single color on a white sheet, it doesn't read the same as it being next to another color. Um, but I think, you know, it went relatively easy and he was almost spot on every single time. And I tried to like um, get a little bit of variation here and there. And I hope I wasn't being too much of a pain in the butt. But <laughs> I, it's hard for me to, to visualize what something's going to look like, you know, before it's done. So I had to give up a lot of trust and give it to him. And he was just really wonderful. And I'm really happy with the final product. Um, so yes, thank you, Dewey. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we're, we're really grateful for Dewey. Um, Dewey and Gabby, you know, work really well together. I think Gabby, um, I, I don't know if you know, you got to I, see her too. Yeah, I think she mixed the colors. Um, from what I saw, she, he sent me one picture and she was mixing, I think, the green coloration. So, yeah, thank you to you, Gabby. <laughs> Gabby. <laughs> um, so, uh, I mean, we, we'd love to have you in the studio in person um, in the future, but is there is there any other you know words you'd like to share about this experience overall, um, or you know, your, your hope for the piece? Yeah, um, the experience was wonderful. I would have loved to have been here, like I said, and if the future presents itself and we're not in the middle of a pandemic again and I can open that up, I would love to be down here and actually physically making the art and you know, working with mistakes and letting a little bit more play happen. Um, I feel like this image was sort of very finalized once I had sent it out and I just had to expect it to be that way. I couldn't play with you know, what something would look like in person or make tweaks or changes. Um, so that's something that like if I were ever to come back I would love to you know mess around a little bit more. Um, I hope that the image reaches some people and maybe just provides a little bit more representation for who we are as people but also sort of artistic representation and visual um, representation to some of the things that we you know have created in the past and who we are now as a people. Um, so yeah I'm just I'm kind of curious to see people's reactions, like once it gets released, if there's going to be any sort of reaction to people that see it, um, if they'll understand it, or if they'll, you know, be questions, I don't know, it's always kind of interesting getting feedback once a piece is released, because you have no control over it once it's in the outside world, um, but I'm, I'm really happy with the final product, I think it's really beautiful, and um, yeah, so. <laughs>